Team on. Today I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot and set up a gachapon machine. Uh, I don't actually even know exactly what brand machine this is because it just does not say on it. It is very similar to the Bandai machine, so I'm going to assume that it might be a knockoff of the Bandai machines or made just kind of third party style like that model. We do have an instruction manual that came with our Getchabon machine. However, sadly, this was actually inside the toy capsule compartment that we actually could not figure out how to originally open. So neat that that was inside there that we couldn't actually reach. Uh, if you like step-by-step -step picture instructions, this is very handy once you actually have it out of the machine. However, that was not the case for us. So it took us a while to even get to this part of finding the instruction manual. I'll flip it over here for you. What we're going to do is we're going to basically show you some of the inner workings of the machine as well as some of the items that we had to troubleshoot ourselves as to why the machine wouldn't work. To open or refill your machine, first you will need your circle key, which looks like this. Our machine came with two of the top keys and one of the circle key. This one says stop just because it has run out on the inside. Uh, fun fact, we had our instruction manual actually inside the toy compartment, which we could not figure out how to open. So that was great, but I will show you how to open it. So that way you don't even need your manual. I'm going to stick your key in, turn it clockwise. I'm gonna have to pop that little door up just because it's in the way. There we go. So this is the inside of the machine. To get your capsule compartment removed, you'll need to come up underneath the machine. This particular brand has two that pop inward. And I already actually have them popped inward. Normally they should be locked like this. There you go. So when it is closed, it should be shut, but to remove it, we need to pop them inward like that. And then we can pull the whole drawer out. Let's just get it over here. The little stop door is triggered by this guy right here. When that is pushed, that will allow people to actually purchase toys. To refill, you have to take at least one gacha ball and move that little lever and put it inside. That will keep the stop sign from being out. It will also allow people to actually use the coins and put tokens in. Otherwise, it will prevent you from doing so. We can just reload all this. All these human heart gadgets here. So once that lever is moved out of the way and you've restocked your drawer, simply take your drawer again little stop sign should be lifted up and you're going to place it back in the machine. Just line it up. I'm trying to do this one handed here. Line it back up and it should slide. Make sure your tabs are out of the way. Everything pushes back in nicely where it's supposed to be. Once it's in, push your tabs back over. You should be all set. We can test this by using a token, putting it in, and here's our toy. Again, quickly drop in the lower one up there. Let's go ahead and remove that token. When you're shutting it, just make sure that your key is still turned counterclockwise. That way the mechanism is pulled outward. So that way you can shut your door Make sure everything's tight and lock it back up. When you're changing out the art or putting in art into the machine itself, 
there will be these two little plastic tabs. All they do is they hold the cardboard up on the inside. They're not a huge piece, but it's better than taping the cardboard fronts up. So just make sure that you pop those out. And once you insert your paper, you just slide that back into place and that'll help hold those up and keep them from kind of drooping down in the back. Push that back in. Pop our tabs back. And to the case. Troubleshooting the gadget bond machine. This here is the coin operator machine. For the most part, you just pop it into the machine itself and it works on its way. If you are going to change the coin amount for how many coins you are going to require for the machine to dispense, you move this little lever. This part is for one token, two tokens, three tokens, and four tokens. It's spring-loaded, if you can see that right there, and then it lifts up and drops into the next spot. As far as a troubleshooting issue, we have found that this piece tends to get stuck. And on the other side, you can see it popping through right there. And it actually prevents the coin from even getting down into the drop piece. So if we put the coin in, and it just kind of gets stuck there. Normally you'd be able to press the release button and it would eject it. But if it gets stuck like this, what we need to do is first click this release and we're going to pop that top part out. We can remove the token, you know, flip it back over, and we're going to undo these three little screws here. Let's do this one-handed, I guess. Hold on. Once we remove this piece, we can get this little door to pop back up to its proper position. There is a tiny little spring there. Make sure it's all lined up properly. Uh, this one is out of alignment. Make sure it's all lined up properly. That way you can get the other piece screwed back in. Make sure that the piece, the arm here, just stays upright. Otherwise, it's going to give you the exact same problem of blocking the token. So make sure it's upright before you screw it back in. Let's go ahead and do that. Now we're going to insert it into the machine. When you're finished repositioning the screw and the arm, the arm piece itself should be able to press down. And if we flip it over, we can see it. Put my hand on it here. Should be able to press it down and see it right through there so it's not blocking the coin. So let's put this piece back on. Drop that into here. So lever up so it clicks back in place. Make sure that the lock is down. Put our token in. And now it has gone past that spot down to the bottom where you can either press the trigger release or crank the wheel to actually have it pay for the toy. Inserting the coin operator into the base of the machine. It's going to look like this. 
fairly simple as far as design. However, it is kind of something that you'd have to finesse into there. There is a release lever here that will correspond with the release lever here. It is very wiggly and very fragile when you're putting it in. You also have to make sure you match up the coin slot to the interior of the coin slot here. Another big element is to pull this lever down. This will help click the piece in place on the inside. We can see that moving up and down there. Uh, again, it's going to be something that you're going to have to finesse in. Uh, it's gonna be a little difficult to film this. So let's see if we can figure this out. Hold on. I'm gonna take this piece it slides in to that tray that's down at the bottom. Make sure you line up the little release as well as the coin slot. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see it super well because normally I have to shove my head in here to get into this. Very snug trying to get it in there. We should have an operating coin release though. Let's try this out. Pop it in, drops in, coin drops out down at the bottom. That's what we need. Let's see if we can get it for a toy. And has dropped into the coin slot down at the bottom. So checking that coin action out again with the door open. We have our token pop it in there. If we want to do a release, should have it pop out down at the bottom. If we are trying to do a toy, pop it in again. Turn the crank. You should hear that coin drop. Coin releases into here. Oh, if I can grab it. Pop that back in. Checking out the inner mechanics here again. We have that little door that we pressed from here, we pushed up, that clamps down onto the inside here. We make sure that our coin slot is lined up as well as the little levers, hard to see with the release, but that inner tube essentially has lined up and gone inside so that moves that mechanic. So if we drop token in, everything should line up down there. If we need to release, press the release, drops out the coin, again, put the token in, everything should line up, turn, and release a gadget. The door itself where the toy comes out, lift that up, gadget pot will come out. When you are inside the machine, you lift that door, closes it off so you can't actually reach further in when you close that front door again shuts this or opens this back this is it shuts it when you are putting the machines together you can see that there are little screws that are actually coming through and if we walk around to the back These plates help hold the machines together so that way they are less likely to topple over. Uh, we ran into the issue of two problems. First issue, the holes don't necessarily always line up. So we just kind of fit it on the best we could to help keep the machines secure. Also, these were coming through on the other side as I showed you. If these are tightened too tight, you actually cannot move the gears inside and it won't release a toy. So if you find that you have put machines together and they are not releasing toys and the wheel is getting stuck, it is likely this issue after we tore everything apart. These have to be loosened up just enough so that way on the inside they are not impeding any of the gears from actually moving. We can see that up here. This machine that is working properly, you should be able to turn the wheel without any kind of resistance when the coin operator is not in there, so long as these screws aren't too deeply 
secured into the opposite side because it is just a thin piece of plastic. Those screws are popping up from the outside of this right here. So as long as these gears can move, you should be in business. To connect your towers together so that way they don't fall, there will be a little metal piece that you can actually pop in and out on one side of your machine. Uh, they don't slide very easily, at least not ours. So make sure that it is popped out. There is a corresponding little slot here on the opposite machine that you can slide them together. These particular models have a wheel, so it's a little bit easier to kind of roll them around. Just slide that in there. So with your gadget machines, you will see that you get these little plates to help connect them after you put the metal connector piece and get them snug together. As you can see, we've already attached a couple of these. We have found that the holes don't exactly always line up, which isn't great, but we do what we can. So go ahead and line them up as best as you can, making sure that you do not tighten them too tightly. That way your gears inside will still actually move. ended up just doing one of each corner and then putting the rest of the screws in other remaining spots. Once you have the rest of your machine all set up, there is one more thing I want to show you. We're going to go back to those keys that we had. This came with three keys, two of straight keys and one of the circular. We're going to go with the straight key. That is actually going to open up our display piece up here. Just take your key and pop it in there. I'm going to turn it and it opens up your showcase. Uh, these little guys fell down again, but that's all right. There is a lip on the edge of this top showpiece bubble. So make sure that lines up in the slot there. Let's see if I can do this one-handed again. Line it up. Make sure that it fits down in the back. So that way that back slot is open. So you can turn the key again to lock it in place. Hopefully that answers your questions about putting together and troubleshooting the, the Gatchaba machine. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. You can get a hold of us here or try to get a hold of us on our Twitter, our Instagram, or our Facebook pages, and we will help you out the best we can. It's a learning process, and we are just glad that it is happy and running and working for our store. Have a good one, guys, and get your game on.